Well, it is December, what is it, 16th or 17th? And no snow. <laughs> that's how I feel. I know people like snow. I'll take snow Christmas Eve, Christmas, and then that's it. Then be done with it. Anyways, if you have your Bibles, turn to uh, Judges. Judges chapter 7. <clears throat> We're going to continue um, the lessons on Gideon. We'll do a little bit of review in a minute, and then we'll uh, continue forward. Judges chapter 7, if you'd get there, if you're able to, please stand for the reading of God's Word. Chapter 7, verse 1 says, Then Jeroboam, who was Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod so that the hosts of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Moray in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand has saved me. Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead, And they returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are are yet too many. Bring them down into the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, This shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people under the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set beside himself. Likewise, every one that bowed down his knees to drink, and the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By three hundred men that lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand, and let all the other people go, every man unto his, his place. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we do, uh, again, thank you for the opportunity uh, to be here in your house, Lord, to be able to study your word. Lord, I pray that uh, you'd be with us this morning, Lord. Be with me as I teach this lesson, Lord, and I pray that you would uh, speak through me this morning. I pray that you would uh, help the people to hear the things that you would have them to hear, Lord, and speak to their hearts uh, the way that you want that to happen, Lord. And I pray that uh, you'd just be with the whole service today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, we had talked about Gideon um, before at the end of chapter 6, and we talked about um, a famous story in the Bible about Gideon putting out the fleece because the Lord told Gideon, I'm going to save uh, Israel by you. And Gideon said, well, I don't know about that. I don't, you know, I'm not, I just come from a, a poor family. I'm not, you know, I'm just, just a normal person. And we kind of all say that when God speaks to our heart, we kind of, you know, say to her in our mind, God, are you sure this is, you got the right person? Like God doesn't know who we are. But we, in our mind, we're thinking, God, you must have mistaken me for somebody else. Maybe there's another person with my name that is, has much more ability than me. God knows what he's doing when he speaks to you about things. And sometimes we have to um, prove it to ourselves. Gideon had to prove it to himself. <clears throat> he wasn't proving it to God. He was proving it to himself that, okay, God, if you're sure, you need to prove it to me. So he put out the fleece. And <clears throat> the fleece was one morning... Dew, would, dew was on the fleece and not on the floor. He put down the fleece. The fleece was soaking wet. The rest of the floor was dry. We would have said, okay, well, that should have been good enough. People should well, okay, that was your sign right there. Gideon said, all right, I believe that kind of, but let's do it one more time, just to be sure, which is okay to do. It's okay that if you're thinking about doing something for the Lord, that you make sure that that's what the Lord wants you to do. Because a lot of times we can think, well, this is what the Lord wants me to do, and we'll just go ahead and do it. But that was just our thoughts, not God's thoughts. Because, you know, the Bible says His ways are not our ways, His thoughts are not our thoughts. Sometimes God's way of thinking is different than our way of thinking. And as you read the Bible and and you go through life, you understand the way that we think about things that happen and things that should happen, how God should take care of things, isn't always the case. God always has a different plan. So Gideon said, I'm going to try it one more time. This time, I want you to have dew all over the floor and let the fleece be dry. Switch it up on God. 
Well, that happened also. So Gideon said, okay, since this is what I know, what's going to happen? And as we read in, in chapter 7, he said he gathered all the people, and Gideon had 32,000 people with him. Now, 32,000 people, when he was going against the army of the Midianites, was still a great, a great number. They were still outnumbered by a great deal. So Gideon could have said, well, I still don't know if I can do this, although, God, you told me that you're going to give them into my hands. This is not enough people in his own mind to defeat that army. Just like when, when they went out and they looked in the promised land and, and the 12 went out and, and they said, well, we can't take that land, although God told them, I'm going to give you the land. I'm going to give you all the land that you can see. I'm going to give you all this land. And Moses sent out the 12 spies. And they came back and 10 of them said, there ain't no way that we can beat those giants. There's no way that we as a people can defeat those people. Although they all, they all knew God said that I'm going to give them into your hands. But only two of them come back and said, yeah, we can go take them. We can, we can take that land because God said so. But they chickened out because in their own mind, they couldn't see that. Gideon couldn't, Gideon couldn't see it at first about himself, about God's going to use him. So he said, okay, I'm going to put out these fleeces. Put out the fleeces. Now he's got 32,000 men. Sometimes when we go through things, we said, okay, God, I don't see it. In, our, in my own eyes, I don't see that I can do what you're asking me to do. I don't see that I can, I can do what you called me to do. I don't see that I can do that. But I'm going to take your word for it and I'm going to go forward. And there's, there's an old saying that I've heard for for a long time that God won't ask you to do anything that he won't give you the ability to do. You can say, well, I don't have the ability to do that. You don't need the ability to do it. God will give you that ability. All you need to do is be available. As I said before, availability is the best ability you can have. Be available for God to use you. So if we're available to God, if we say, okay, God, whatever you want me to do, I will, I will do it because I know you're going to, God's not going to say, okay, you go do that and I'm just going to leave you alone. You know, it'd be like me telling um, telling a little kid, okay, you go cook dinner. I'm going to go sit on the couch and watch TV. I'm not going to help you. Don't ask me no questions. You just go do it. We would never do that. We would, okay, you're going to cook dinner, and I'll be right here by your side if you have any questions, and I'll show you what to do, and I'll help you. I'll get, and, I, and then eventually, they'll have the ability to do it themselves. God gives us, God says, I'm going to ask you to do it, but I'm going to be right there with you. I'm going to give you the ability to speak, because Moses said, I can't speak. I can't, I can't talk, God. You can't. I can't do that. Basically, God said, well, yeah, you can. But he said, okay, well, if you can, then take your brother with you. And as <clears throat> I think it was Pastor Bell said, did you ever hear Aaron do any of the talking? No, God, God, Moses did all the talking. God, Mo, God used Moses and God gave him the ability to speak. He's telling Gideon, I'm going I'm to give you the, I'm going to give, give the Midianites into your hand. You go ahead and you go down there. He said, 32,000. Then the guy said, what? Hold on a second. 32,000 is too many. And Gideon's looking at the armies that, that were there thinking, really? 32,000 is too many? I was thinking that's not nearly enough. God said, well, 32,000 is too many, so this is what I want you to do. You go, you tell them, whoever's afraid, whoever doesn't want to go, you don't have to. Now, if he asked anybody, if you're going into battle and he asked who is afraid, I think most people would be somewhat afraid. So if you ask that question, whoever's afraid, go ahead and leave. See ya. God said, we can go ahead and leave, so it's, it's okay. We're not going to be counted as chicken. We're just going to go ahead and leave. 22,000 left. Gideon's probably thinking, what in the world am I going to do with 10,000 people? I'm fighting an army that has already... already oppressed us and already has, has been, been had their hand on us and, and killed all of our cattle, killed all of our crops, and they're, they're making it hard for us, and now I've only got 10,000 men. He probably asked himself, God, what are, you, what are you doing? I mean, it doesn't say that, but I can imagine thinking, are you sure, really? I mean, 32,000, that, that would have been okay. God said, okay, 10,000 is still too many. It's too many because if, if you defeat them, then people are going to think, well, I did that. See, God, God wants us to do things, and God wants us to step out, but God wants us to realize it's through His power, and it's through Him, because all the glory is supposed to go to the Lord. All the glory is supposed to go to Jesus Christ. We're supposed to give Him glory for all that we do. 
If we take, if we take any of the glory, we're taking glory away from Him. We're taking glory that we don't deserve. But we do that sometimes as human beings. We, we, want, we want people to look at us and we want people to um, give, us, give us praise. People, you know, people, people like to be told you did a good job. People like to be praised and that's okay. But we have to remember it's not our ability. It's God's ability. That's why God uses people that, that don't think that they, they can do those things. He doesn't, he doesn't necessarily always use, he doesn't, I'm not going to say never use them, but nine times out of ten, he doesn't use the person that says, hey, I can do that, man. I, can, I, don't, I don't really need God's help. I can go up and preach, and I can go up and I can do this, and I can do that because I have great ability. Not, really, not understanding that, well, God gave you the ability you have anyways. You know, and that's, you know, I look at, look at all these athletes that, you know, it's, well, I put in all the work, and I did all this stuff, and I have the ability that they're not giving God the credit for the ability that he gave them. Even the physical ability. The people that are, that are born with the, you know, LeBron James is six foot eight, 260 pounds, and he's, he's very athletic. I don't, very, I, don't, I don't ever remember him saying, well, God gave me the ability that I have. Or, you know, it's all because of God that, I can, that I'm doing what I'm doing. It's always about he's doing it because of who he is. We have to remember that whatever we do for the Lord, we need to say, to God be the glory. Because He's the one that put me in a situation that I'm in. He's the one that gave me the ability to say that. He's the one that, that when I get up here and I talk, I ask the Lord all the time, Lord, please speak, speak through me. I should say speak through me clearly. Speak through me today. And I have to give Him the glory because He does that. Because it's not my ability. Because I'm not, like I said before, I, I, never, I never saw myself... <clears throat> standing up here talking to a room full of people. I had speech class when I was in high school. I failed speech class because I would not go up and give a speech. I was scared to death to go up in front and talk to people. I was, scared, I was afraid to raise my hand and ask the teacher a question. I was one of those kids that, you know, they always say, well, if you don't ask the question, that's, that's, the, that's a dumb question, a question that's never asked. Always ask a question if you don't know. I would never ask a question. I'd I would sit there, and if I didn't know it, I'd hopefully try to find out or ask somebody else. I wasn't going to raise my hand and be felt embarrassed to be made fun of because I asked a dumb question. I don't know if you're like that, but that's how I was. But God told me that I want you to, I want you to be a preacher, and I want you to go up, and I want you to talk to people, and I want you to stand in front of the pulpit, and you speak. I don't think so. But it's through His ability that I'm able to do that. It's through, through what He did through me. Well, He's telling Gideon... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it, make it sure that they all know that I'm the one that's saving them. You know that because I've told you and I, and I proved it to you through the fleeces. You know that, that I'm going to save Israel through you. But you're going to have to make sure you give me the glory. Now I've got to make sure all Israel knows that it's not them that, that beat the Midianites. It's not them that because they were such great warriors and great soldiers and that they have all the bravery that they did it. I want them to know that I did it. So they rely on me. God wants us to rely on him for everything that we do. He wants us to rely on him for, for the money that we have, for the jobs that we have, for everything that we have. God, God gets the glory. You know, we sometimes we think, well, it's my ability that I got a promotion. It's my ability that I got this job. It's my ability that I'm, I'm a good worker and I do this and I do that. Okay, you're doing it in your physical body, but it's, God is the one that gave you that ability. God is the one that gave you that determination in your mind. God is the one that gave you the fortitude to go ahead and do whatever it is that you're doing. It's because of God. It's not because of you, because you're not, you're not any better than anybody else. You're not this great person. You're doing great things through, through the Lord. The Lord is the one that gave you your brains. People say, well, I studied and I did this. Yeah, we have to do that. But the Lord, sometimes we forget that the Lord gave you the intellect that you have. The Lord gave you the ability that you do have to, to be good at math or to be good at this or to be able to get up in front of somebody and sing a song. The Lord gives you that ability. It's not because of you. And that's what, that's what we need to remember when we, when we read this about Gideon and the, this, how Gideon gets, you know, you, we've heard Gideon's 300. This is how we're getting to that point because God's making it sure that they know I'm the one that brought you the victory. It's not you. So he told Gideon, you go tell the people. The 10,000 that are left, bring them down to the water. And then however they drink, whether they lap like a dog whether, or whether they bow down their knees and they, they take a drink, whichever one I decide 
that I tell you, those are the ones that you're going to take, the other ones you're not going to take. So Gideon told, told the people, you know, go ahead, let's go down, let's get a drink. He didn't tell them what the, what the situation was. He didn't tell them, well, God's going to decide. He just said, get a drink. Some of them bowed down their knees, and I don't know, you know, I'm trying to picture in my mind how they're lapping like a dog, you know, especially without getting down close to the water because dogs lap with their tongue. But basically, you know, they, they reached down, they picked it up like this, and they put it in their mouth. The other ones, they bowed down on their knees. God said, all right, all the ones that bowed down on their knees, they can go. Gideon's probably thinking, really? Are you sure you didn't mix that up? Shouldn't it be the, the, the 300 can go, the, the other ones can stay? Because I'm really getting thin on people here, Lord. The Lord says, no, they can go. You've got 300 men to defeat all the armies because I'm the one that's going to defeat them. I'm the one that's going to take care of it for you. You're not going to do anything. You're just going to do what I tell you to do. You're going to, you're going to go, you're going to defeat that army, Gideon, with those 300 men. Those 300 men are probably thinking, Gideon, what are you doing? I mean, I can't imagine what, in their mind what they were thinking about Gideon, thinking, are you insane right now? We had 32,000. You told them whoever's afraid, go home. I stayed. Now the other guys, you said, okay, you didn't drink correctly, so now you can go. So the other guys are probably thinking, well, man, if I would have known that, I would have took it with my hand. I didn't know. Or maybe they were thinking, Phew, I'm glad I, wasn't, glad I wasn't with them. Glad I didn't drink that way. Glad I didn't copy off my buddy next to me, waiting to see how he was drinking. I, I'm, you know, as Pastor Bell always says, put yourself in that situation. If you were one of those men, and then although you saw all the other men leave, first the, the 22,000 and then the, the 9,700, you're left with 300 people. 300 people is what would fit in this church. If this, if this, this was full of people in the pews, you're going to go defeat this great army. Just you. Can you imagine looking around? We're thinking, you guys are going to go defeat the Russian army. You 300, we'd think, you've, there's no way. So the people either had great confidence in Gideon, that, that Gideon is the one that God chose. And those 300 men, I don't know if Gideon's, obviously they didn't get a choice after that. God didn't, God didn't will it down anymore, which Gideon, I'm sure, was probably glad. But 300 men. You're going to go, and this, you're going to go to, you're going to defeat that army. But you're really not going to defeat that army because I'm going to give them into your hands. And, I, and, and I'm sure they heard the story before of how God brought Israel through, how God, God defeated all the armies ahead of them. So it wasn't like they were blind, blindly just doing this, they had no idea. But God wanted them to make sure that this is what you're supposed to do. Just like us, we know all the stories in the Bible. We, we've read them. We know that God took care of them. We know that God does these things. We know that God will be with us. We know God lives inside of our heart when we're saved. God will never leave us nor forsake us. We know all the verses. But yet when we go through things, we kind of forget all those things. We, we look in our, in our human, in our fleshly mind, we look in our fleshly eyes of, how am I going to get through this? How am I going to do this? There's no way I can ha this can happen. God has to remind us sometimes, look, it's not you. Because you're right. You can't get through this. You can't go, you can't do this. He's, he's wanting them men to know that, yeah, you, you can't defeat this army. I don't care how brave you are. I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how much it took for you to be one of the 300. You still can't defeat that army. There's just too many of them. I want you to know that I'm the one that's going to take care of it. God wants us to know no matter what we go through, he's going to take care of us. And it's hard for us when we're going through something. It's hard for us to see on the other side. It's hard for us to see how God's going to do that with, with us. How's God, how's God going to do that with the situation we're in? How, how am I going to? And we always think, how am I going to get through it? You're going to get through it with God's help. That's how we get through things. That's how things get, get done in the Christian world. And that's why we have to think spiritually and not fleshly. As Pastor Bell has been going over um, the, the fruit of the Spirit, we have to think in a, in a spiritual way to get through this life that we live in in the flesh. And I know that's hard to do because we live in our flesh. We can't get rid of our flesh. We can't get rid of our fleshly thoughts. They're always there, but we have to fight them back 
and get into our spiritual thoughts. And that's why we need to, to always be praying and always be reading our Bible, always come to church and being fed spiritually. So when things happen, we say, oh, okay. When we first started going to church, we would be talking about something that was happening in our life. It's like, man, I, don't, I just don't see what's going to happen. And we'd come to church and, you know, we always think it's, wow, I can't believe it happened. But something was preached just exactly on what we were talking about, that what we were going through. There was a message preached on that subject. And we think, man, that was really cool. It is really cool, but that's how God works. When you're, think, when you're going through something and you come to church and we all go through different things, whatever message is preached affects all of us in a different way, but it's the same message. And we're all thinking to ourselves, man, that was really cool. He spoke right to me. The person over here is going, yeah, he spoke right to that was For me, that was my message. And we can all say that. And that's how great the Holy Spirit is, and that's how great God is. It That's how it works. Because God knows each one of us. God knows each one of us what we're going through. God knew Gideon. When he, when he told Gideon, you know, God is very long-suffering with us because he knows how we are. Because he created us, and he knows everything. It's like when, he, when Gideon said, well, I can, you know, I'm going to ask you something, Lord. I'm going to do this, please. You know, the Lord could have said, no, I want you to go right now and listen. You know, sometimes when we talk to our kids, we say, I want you to listen the first time. And if they don't listen the first time, well, then we're mad. And we get upset with them. But how many times do we listen to the Lord the first time? How many times do we, does the Lord have to say, okay, look, I've told you once, I'm going to tell you again. The Lord is very long-suffering. It's like, he doesn't give us timeouts necessarily, or he doesn't say, well, I'm going to count the three and count the three ten times. The Lord wants us to realize, but He puts us through things to understand that when He says, this is what I want you to do, or this is, you're going through a hard time, but I'm going to get you through it, we have to remember those things in our mind. We have to remember what he, He's already brought us through, what God has already done for us. You know, just like kids, you tell them, well, I want you to listen to me the first time, and I want you to obey me when I tell you, not when you want to obey me, but when I tell you to obey me. And then eventually, hopefully, as you go through that and you correct them when they don't, they'll remember okay, this is what my dad told me to do, or my mom told me to do this, I'm going to do it the first time because it worked out better that way. I didn't get in trouble. I didn't, you know, and then they learn to trust us when we tell them something. You know, when you tell your kids no about something, you want them just to, like God, when God tells us to do something, God wants us to trust him and just be, okay, Lord, I'm putting my trust in you and I'm just going to do it or I won't do it. Whatever it is, you told me. We want our kids to be the same way. So when we tell our kids no, they have that confidence that they're telling me no for a good reason. They're telling me no because they love me and they're gonna, it's going to keep me out of trouble. And they may ask, well, why not? Well, then you need to tell them why. And then over time, they eventually they realize that you only have their best interest in mind for them. Sometimes we forget God has our best interest in his mind. He has, he has what we're going through and what's going to get us through and what's going to be in our best interest all the time because he knows the end we can't see a minute we can't see three seconds from now but God can see all the way through eternity he knows what's going to happen so we have to put our faith and trust in him that okay Lord I don't really understand what's going on right now I really don't get it but I know in the end it's all going to work out because it's so far what I've been through in my life has always worked out because I, I put my faith and trust in you we get ourselves in trouble when we forget God and we do it ourselves. And it doesn't work out. Well, it doesn't work out because you didn't let God do it. You know, Abraham and Sarah, didn't, it didn't work out for them. I mean, it did in the end, but it didn't work out for all of Israel because to this day, they're still battling because of Ishmael. Because Abraham... And Sarah did not wait on the Lord. The Lord said, I'm going to give you a child. They said, okay, well, I don't see how you're going to do that, but all right, that's great. Then eventually they said, well, okay, well, apparently not. God's not going to do that. God must be a liar, and we're going to do it ourselves. Now, the Lord knew that was going to happen because he knows everything. Why, you know, we always say, why would God allow that to happen? I don't know why God allows things to happen, why he doesn't. But God can do what he wants because he's God. But they got ahead of God, and they, they had that child that they should not have had. 
they eventually had to figure out, okay, we need to put our faith and trust in the Lord no matter what we go through because he promised that and he went through it, but just on his time. When we go through things in this life, and I'm sure Gideon and all those men are thinking, well, man, I don't really know how it's going to work out. But I guess I'm going to have to put my faith and trust in the Lord. When we go through things in our life, we put our faith and trust in the Lord. And when things, eventually when we get through whatever we're going through, when we look back, we see, okay, I see how it happened now. I see what I went through. I see why I went through it. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. When we're going through it, we always want to know why. Why well, I think this is why. Why well, I think this is why. I think this is why God did this. And really, we really don't know why. We know why in this story why God did it, because God told Gideon. Gideon didn't have to wonder because he's probably wondering, well, why does it have to be so less people? Why does it have to be so few? Couldn't it, you know, you could have just 10,000 would have been good enough. God whittled it all the way down to 300 because he wanted them to know for sure. It's me doing it, not you. You allow me to do this for you. You do what I tell you to do, exactly how I tell you to do it, and everything will work out fine. That's why God gave us this Bible. Because if we read this Bible and we do what it says, exactly how it says to do it, and God gives us stories in the Bible to show us if we do it His way, it works out. But it, we always still forget that. In our, in our human mind, we see it in our own eyes. We, we can't see it through God's eyes. Although God wants us to look through, you know, look at people and look through situations through spiritual eyes. It's hard for us to do that. But we have to train ourselves to do that. We have to train ourselves to put our faith and trust in Him. That no matter what I'm going through, and we think, sometimes we think everything that we go through is ins insignificant to the Lord. No, this is just a small matter. God doesn't really care about this. God cares about everything that we do. God cares about every minute detail in our lives. Every, every feeling that you have, everything that you go through, God cares about that more than you would know. As, as I said, His thoughts about us are more than the sand of the sea, or more than the sand, not the sand of the sea, the sand of the earth. And there's a lot of sand. His thoughts about us are more than that. So if He thinks about us that much, He cares about us and everything that we do. But as we read the story of Gideon and how he got to the 300, and next week we're going to see what they did to defeat the army. We're going to see what, what the Lord told them to do, how he was going to defeat that army. He told them what he was going to do. He told them how to do it. And we'll see how he did that. We'll see how he proved himself to those men that day and the rest of the men. It wasn't just for the 300. He was proving himself to the guys, to the people that left too. He was proving himself to the 32,000 that were there at the beginning all that left but the 300. He was proving himself to all of Israel that day. I'm going to, those 300 men are going. And you can say, well, it was those 300 men did a great job, but you're going to realize that it was me that did it, not those 300 men. So he's proven himself to everybody. When God does something in your life and you share it with somebody, that's, that's God proving himself to other people besides you. Because God just doesn't want to prove it to you. He wants to prove it to everybody else. That's why we need to share our testimonies and share our stories with people. So I, Pastor Brown always asks, when God answers your prayer, I want to know. Because it proves God to him. You say, well, he's a pastor. He doesn't need God to prove himself. Yeah, he does. Because he's still human. We all need God to prove ourselves, prove himself to us. Although God doesn't have to prove himself, but he, for us, he needs to prove himself. So we have proof of that. So we, so we have more confidence. So Share your, share your stories with people, the things that you, God had you to do and the things that you went through and the prayers that have been answered. Share those with people because God wants to get that glory all the time, but not for himself. God wants, to, wants you to do that so everybody knows about him because God, doesn't, God wants us to give him glory and God, God, God desires it, but God doesn't need it. He does it for us. Everything that he does, does is for us. So make sure when you go, th when you go through the day, when you're, if you're going through a hard time, just know that God's with you. God's thinking about you. And if you rely on him and not yourself, God will get you through it. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we do, uh, again, thank you for your uh, opportunity to be in this house. Lord, thank you again for your word. Lord, I pray that you would uh, help us today, Lord. And I pray that if there's anyone going through anything today, 
Lord, they would realize that, that you're with them, Lord, and that uh, if they would rely on you, that you would get them through it. Lord, if you ask them to do something, that you'll give them the ability to do whatever it is that you ask them to do. Lord, we just need to put our faith and confidence in you. Lord, I pray that you be with Pastor Ballard as he preaches the message this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.